Hi everybody. First of all, a quick status update. The Ace Attorney retrospective on Turnabout Samurai is coming along, slowly but surely, and I'm doing a little companion video on Maya Fey that is also coming along steadily. My job is in its busy season right now, and while that doesn't really change the hours I work, it does mean I feel more worn out when I get home, which slows down my recording. Today, though, I wanted to make a video on something else, something I hadn't thought about for a long time that I remembered kind of out of the blue earlier this week. A webcomic. One of my favorite webcomics, in fact, and a webcomic that will sadly probably never be completed, considering the last time it updated was in 2013, which is why it's been so long since I thought about it. This happens with a lot of webcomics, probably most webcomics. Without the support of a professional publisher, it's very easy for other aspects of life to get in the way of even comic authors who are relatively skilled and consistent. Never mind all the literal teenagers and prima donnas who start comics. Many, many comics are abandoned and then forgotten. A lot of them kind of deserve it, to be honest, but sometimes one that was really enjoyable and promising ends the same way, and it's a shame. So this will be both a shout out and a send off, because I feel like this comic is one that deserves to be remembered, even if the chance it will ever update again is extremely unlikely. The comic I'm talking about is No Rest for the Wicked. No Rest for the Wicked is a fantasy webcomic with characters and events loosely based on classic fairy tales. Okay, I know that's not the most original concept, but author Andrea L. Peterson makes good use of it without making it feel gimmicky. The characters really feel like her own, and the fairy tale references serve more as hints at what's going to come, or character backstories that haven't been revealed yet, since everything is changed and expanded on from the original fairy tales. The comic is drawn in black, white, and red, which is used as a strong contrasting color. The art mixes western and manga styles, which has been a popular thing to do for a while now, but Andrea Peterson does it a bit differently. Her style is sketchier with lots of thin lines. Sometimes the lines for facial features will disappear completely so that there's just the suggestion of a shape, particularly for mouths. At the very beginning of the comic, the art can look a little amateurish, but it quickly improves and stays consistent throughout most of the comic. What Peterson really has a talent for, though, is shading and lighting effects. A lot of the best looking panels and scenes tend to be darker, both tonally and literally. Some of the scenes in the dead of night, in the middle of a thunderstorm, or lit by a fireplace look downright gorgeous. If you ever want to see what a big difference proper shading can make in a drawing, check it out. The story of No Rest for the Wicked follows a few interesting characters as they go out into the world in search of the moon, which disappeared out of the night sky about a year before the events of the story, causing all kinds of problems, both personal and for the world at large. Also, the moon is a woman in this story, or at least seems to be. Along the way, the main cast has a series of adventures that range from relatively lighthearted and comedic to very, very dark. But they all fit in with this world and these circumstances, so it never feels tonally jarring. There are three main characters in this group of moon hunters, all of whom bring their own dynamic to the story. The first main character is Princess November, who is based on the princess from The Princess and the Pea. She's looking for the moon because its disappearance from the sky has made her completely unable to sleep, and a fairy disguised as an old woman told her the moon must return to the sky before she can sleep again. November is hypersensitive, not in the commonly used Tumblr sense of the word. Oh, all right! Tumblr's been down for two hours and I'm on my period! Let's go! Let's go now! but literally, physically hypersensitive. A leaf blows in her face and gives her a black eye. Sitting on a wood floor gives her bruises. On a more positive note, this hypersensitivity also gives her an almost supernatural sense of perception about some things. She's able to tell if someone is noble-born just by looking at them and can sense death on objects. November is the viewpoint character of the story and will be the most relatable to most people. She's practical but has a strong moral conscience and tries to help people where she can. One might call her altruistic. The second main character is Perot, sometimes called Puss. Three guesses who he's based on. 
Now ye augur, pray for mercy from... Puss! Hey, what? Although in this story he's a cat that can shapeshift into a cat man, Perot is cynical, self-centered, a bit of a coward, and very, very clever. Initially, Perot didn't want to go on a quest to find the moon, but November convinced him to go basically for the lulls. He doesn't have a personal stake in finding the moon and is just there for his own amusement. And he's quick to make sure he has an escape plan should things go badly. Perot is the member of the group who has the smart. He's the one who solves puzzles and thinks his way around problems. The third main character is Red. Now, the darker and edgier take on Little Red Riding Hood has been tried quite a bit, which makes sense when you consider the subject matter, but usually the results are pretty cringy. Here though, it really works. The character is compelling, fits naturally in with the world, and it doesn't feel try hard. And I gotta say, I love her design. The pale pointed face, the dark hair hanging over her eyes, and of course that red cloak that makes her pop in every panel she's in. It's so simple, but so effective. One big aspect of Red's character is that she gives everyone else the creeps, and her design, her tendency to switch between an intense stare and a slasher smile depending on her mood, and her angular speech bubbles while everyone else is around, all get this across wonderfully without going too over the top. Red's personality is a lot like a traumatized war vet. She's moody, doesn't talk much, and is quick to resort to violence, but remains sympathetic. She shares very little about herself. She doesn't even tell the other two why she's joined them in the search for the moon, but we learn a lot about her through her actions. Like how she has fun frightening children, but gets furious when children are actually being harmed. Red is the one member of the group who can actually fight, and she's pretty mean with the axe she carries. Although the three main characters are inspired by popular fairy tales that pretty much everyone knows, other story elements and characters come from less well-known fairy tales. The entire main plot about searching for the moon comes from the story The Buried Moon. There's a side character known as The Boy, whose adventures are based on the youth who went forth to learn what fear was and another character named Claire, who was possibly going to become another member of the main cast before the comic stopped updating, is based on the story The Girl Without Hands. Peterson actually included links to all these stories in the extras section of her website, which is kind of cool. No Rest for the Wicked was quite popular back when it updated regularly. It won the 2007 Web Cartoonist Choice Award for Outstanding Fantasy Webcomic, and was translated into Italian, German, Japanese, and what I think is Russian, although the link to the Italian translation no longer works. Still, how many webcomics are popular enough to get even one alternate language translation, let alone four? So why did Andrea L. Peterson stop making the comic? Well, we don't really know. She's definitely still around. A channel called Video Captor Productions that did a pretty good quality dubbing of most of the comic that I'll link to at the end of the video, apparently got in touch with her two years ago when her website went down and she quickly fixed the problem. So that's why the site still works so well after five years. She also has a Twitter and a Tumblr that are linked from her website that she occasionally posts her art on, but nothing related to the comic in years. Recently, it seems to mostly be Steven Universe fan art. She has a deviant art page that doesn't seem to have updated in a long time as well. Maybe she just got burnout on the story. It happens. Another likely possibility is that she couldn't continue with the comic because it was too time consuming and she wasn't making any money off of it. See, No Rest for the Wicked was around before the glory days of Patreon, where having a large fan base for a webcomic makes it feasible to earn a pretty good living. There's no ads on her website or a link to a PayPal or anything either. They could have been taken down, but the site doesn't seem any different than I remember it back when she was still updating. As near as I can tell, she did all this for free. So maybe expenses and life got in the way. The irony is that if she started updating again, started up a Patreon, and got as big now as she was before, she could almost certainly make enough money for the comic to become a very worthwhile full-time job. Andrea, if you ever happen to see this video, let me tell you that if you ever do start the comic back up again, I'll definitely give you a shout out on this channel because I really enjoyed your work. We've only got about 120 subscribers at the moment, but every little bit helps, right? And if you don't want to start up again for whatever reason, that's fine too. I'm glad that you appreciate your fans and have made the effort to keep your comic available online for them. 
Not everyone does that. I'll link to the No Rest for the Wicked comic in the description below. There are four main completed chapters, a fifth one that's incomplete, and several side chapters. If it sounds like something you might enjoy, well, I personally highly recommend it. It's a pretty good way to spend a few rainy afternoons. If you liked this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, you gotta click the bell after you subscribe if you actually want to be informed when we update. I thought the whole point of subscribing was getting informed when a channel updates, but YouTube decided you basically have to double subscribe for some stupid reason. If you remember No Rest for the Wicked and wanted to say something about it, or if you're interested in me doing more unfinished webcomic videos, please let me know in the comments. I already have a couple of ideas for a couple more videos at least. Thanks and take care everyone!